Alright everyone, so in this video here, I wanted to talk about emulation and the things I've decided to do uh, moving forward. Now obviously, I was going to make a, a Jaguar video, but apparently the audio in my Jaguar went out. So, I'm currently ordering some parts to replace because supposedly that I figured out the issue with it though there is like a a different uh, fix that I could do that's very cheap but I want to first get the parts in first look it over and go from there but that's that's gonna be a little bit but for now what I wanted to talk about was emulation on the PC now the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I'm one of those people that I dealt with emulation back in the early days but then when the newer consoles were coming out I pretty much started concentrating more on playing the current games that were coming out and have not really thought much about emulation well for a while I was thinking of maybe looking into it again and I know about RetroArch and all that stuff, which is actually what I use. But I did not realize how well a lot of these emulations are now. So basically what I decided to do was, a while ago I got one of the Surface Go 2s. Uh, it's one of these Windows uh, Microsoft made Surface tablets. So this is the second generation version of the Surface Go. Obviously, this is the Surface Go 2. And you're going to notice my TV's displaying what's displaying here. That's because a while ago I did get one of those Microsoft Wireless display adapters. And what's cool about this, and by the way, if you're wondering about the specs on my Surface Go 2, this is the more powerful version. So basically, the only thing more expensive than this is the uh, cellular connection. So basically, a SIM card tray. So you can get um, internet through like a cell network. But I opted not to pay extra for that. So basically this has the more powerful Intel chip. Has more RAM on it. More storage. And, and all that. So basically what I can do now is I can launch RetroArch. And I do have a Xbox controller. And these are all the different consoles I have on here. Yes, including the Jaguar. Though, I'm going to admit the emulation currently for it kind of sucks. But the fact that it even runs on this thing, it's actually quite impressive. I also have Lynx. A um, couple of Master System games, though, mainly the uh, Genesis course the N64. N64 surprisingly works really really well on this thing. So if I want to play Lynx, um, actually you know what? Let's do N64. Yes I know I'm not going to tell you where to get any of this stuff at. Let's just say you can just do an online search. But um, let's do and by the way, just on a side note, this is wirelessly streaming to the TV. So I am using that adapter and I do have it in gaming mode which is supposed to be uh, as little latency as possible. And I've been testing this for a little bit now. And for the most part, it works surprisingly well like this. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of surprised how well this works. So... And yes, I do have like Japanese versions too. <laughs> because why not? But, um... Let's see. You 
You know what, let's do Monster Truck Madness 64. Let's see how well this runs. Um, I do have two different ones. Um, let's try this one, see how... Let's see how well this works. The N the N sixty four version I have to have a couple of different ones only because some games work better than others. But uh, right, let's try this. Let's see what truck to use. Uh, all right, let's do that one. All right, let's just let's just jump in here. This might have been not the best game to try, honestly, just because I don't remember playing this back when I was younger, but it's been so long since I played this game that I don't really remember the controls or anything. So let me, let me do this. try you know what how about Game Boy Vance now for anyone wondering my thoughts with when it comes to stuff like this here's the thing 90% of these older games almost never get any kind of re-release or anything like that so if there's no other way to legally obtain older games like this, then obviously the companies behind these games either doesn't exist anymore or they have no financial benefit for, uh, for putting any effort into re-releasing these games. But... Uh, Oh, you know what? Apparently I have a beta version of Cruising Velocity, so you know what? Let's try this. Um, I guess we'll associate with this one, see how it is. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell this isn't finished.
And for me, when it comes to like beta versions of games, um, I find them interesting just just more on the development side of things. So let's. Oh wow. Apparently, I can switch. You know what? I wonder if there's. Yeah, okay, there is collision. Obviously, the AI isn't uh, properly programmed in this version. Anyway, let me uh, let me exit this again. And of course, the nice thing about this too is like there is like network play and all that. So let me load up the final build version of Cruising Velocity. Now, I never actually played this on real hardware, so when it comes to the sound and stuff, I'm not entirely sure how accurate it is. Oh man, playing these, playing these 3D games on a big 55 inch. Um, yeah, it, it looks kind of blocky. Not gonna lie. And keep in mind too, these games were designed for a much smaller screen, so. If I was actually playing this on real hardware, I'm pretty sure it's going to look better than it, than it does right now. Only because, you know, playing on a much smaller screen. This clearly does not feel like a cruising game. Plus it's laps, so... Yeah. This version clearly does not feel like a cruising game. It might have the name, and it might have the same checkpoint audio, but... All right, let's try something else. So if I go back in here, actually, you know what? Let's try a 32X. Uh, what's that one really rare, expensive game? I know there's like a couple of them. Um, Oh yeah, this one, and I think it's, oh yeah, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, you know what, let's do Dark, what is it, Dark, yeah, let's do this one. This is like a European exclusive, apparently. Let's see how well this works.
look how slow that's going. I wonder if this game is playing too fast. Now my understanding is that this is actually one of the few uh, 3D games on the 32X with actual textures. So all the other ones is pretty much uh, flat, you know, just flat colors. But this one actually has actual textures on them. I do have a wireless uh, Sega Genesis controller that I could actually connect to my tablet. Honestly, if this is all you do in this game, this I don't really find this game enjoyable. To me right now, this just feels like a a 3D ash or asteroids or something like that. All right, so what are my thoughts on doing this? Um, it's actually kind of cool. Now, are you going to get the exact same experience as like real hardware? No. I would say no, but in terms of just using it and just essentially just having a way to play older games either on the cheap or... Let's just, here's the thing, let's just face it. If you're one of those people that is more in favor of having real hardware, which is understandable, but at the same time, it's getting to the point now that anyone that really wants to get the real hardware connected and all that stuff, there is such a high barrier of cost and even just means of just trying to acquire the stuff is getting so hard to find those things that emulation for most people is pretty much the answer and especially going like 10 20 years in the future i mean come on how, how many people realistically are going to have these kinds of things and even the people today what's going to happen with the next generation of people Say, for example, 
my collection of Atari Jaguar games. What's going to happen in the future, you know, like if I ever had kids, pass it along to them, what happens to them? Does it just get dumped in the, in, in the dumps or something, or does it actually get sent off to someone else? Who knows? Don't know what, what happens in the future. So, stuff like this, I'm actually kind of okay with because of those reasons. It's getting to the point that it's getting so hard to acquire a lot of this stuff. And not only that, but most of these companies behind stuff like this, for the most part, they're not going to do anything. Now, of course, you got like Nintendo, um, but Nintendo has always been known to do this. And basically, for the most part, as long as you're not profiting off of stuff like this, almost always, with the exception of Nintendo, nothing much is really going to happen. Now, like I said before, Nintendo is like the, the outlier of all this. And, um, but let's just face it, 90% of these games, none of the companies that were behind it are either still in business, or even if they still are, there's no financial incentive to do anything about it because they, they have their time in place. So, for me personally, I'm kind of okay with stuff like this, but if you're someone that does have you know like the real hardware and all that stuff great happy for you but at the same time stuff like this uh it's, i think it kind of works for most people now i can play doom 64 like this too so you know you can just put the tablet on the side there and then of course start playing it and this right here, this is actually something that's really cool about it. And yes, I do have a version of Doom 64 on my Switch. Obviously on the PC, on my Xbox. Um, this is just a great game. But but one thing I will say too about this you know, about Doom 64 playing it like this. Um, it's not always going to be perfect. Ooh. No, oh, damn it. There is a slight lag, especially playing a newer game. Well, when I say newer, I'm talking about more newer coded games on, on stuff like this. There is a slight lag, but honestly, when it comes to the older games, the way the games were designed, there was... Let's just say there was some... Well... That might be wrong to say, but it's easier to play older games in a setup like this than like a newer coded game in like 60 frames per second or higher. So basically older games that had like much lower frame rates, uh, even if there is like some lag going on, is not really going to matter. But newer games that are 60 frames per second you are going to notice the lag. So, I think something like this kind of works better for more of the emulation side of things for older games. But trying to do this like on newer games, um, 
just have it physically connected to the TV. But this is more something of an experiment for me to try out, and it works surprisingly well. And it is nice that, you know, if I want to play like NES games or stuff like that, I can basically just connect the tablet to the TV wirelessly, pull out the controller for it, and play it that way, and, you know, just have fun, so. But yeah, I'll end it here. Like always, have a good one. Leave those comments down below. Like this video, share this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribing. Like always, have a good one.